Good morning. Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for July 27th. Getting long in the tooth. The trees do not grow up to the sky. You know, when I look at a company, one of the first things I look at is what is the market capitalization and how realistic is that I can double that market capitalization within three to five years? Because if you double money in five years using the rule of 72, that's 15% a year. And for the risk I'm taking in the market, I expect to make that. So one book that I want to continue to emphasize is The Battle for Investment Survival by Gerald Loeb. Now, Gerald Loeb was the founding partner of E.F. Hutton and Company. Remember, when E.F. Hutton speaks, others listen. In this book, he talks about the importance of learning how to survive bear markets. Because if you don't survive the bear market, when the next bull market comes, you're really not in a good position. But if you would, pause your video player and read this. I'm just going to basically tell you what the man is saying in this particular page. I think this was the most important page in the book. And it talks about speculation versus investment. And basically what he is saying is that it is paradoxical. But if you don't have the right attitude, you're going you're gonna to have problems. In other words, he says, my feeling is that an intelligent program aimed at doubling one's money might at least succeed in retaining one's capital or actually making a good profit with it. Any aim less than this is doomed to failure. You know, I saw an interesting fact the other day that since 1970, the stocks that existed in 1970, 70% of them have gone to zero. So if you were a buy and hold person, like my grandfather who bought and held the passenger rail stocks, which didn't work out too well, you, you just have to realize that stocks do have a, uh, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end and you need to be aware of that. Now back to demographics, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit. You should, you basically need to be investing in the United States because United States and India are the only two countries that have favorable demographics, meaning young people. And young people consume. And in order to have a healthy economy, you have to have consumption. So the Generation X, the boomers were born in 46 to 64, Generation X, 65 to 80, the Millennials, 1981 to 96, and the Generation Z is 1997 to 2012. Well, it's primarily these three groups that are going to cause most of the consumption because, as you can see with this chart, ages 35 to 44, 45 to 54, and 55 to 64, this is the sweet spot. This is where you want to invest in products and services that this category or this age category will seek, which basically means technology, it could mean healthcare, it could mean retail. It's just that the demographics of our country are very positive, therefore you should invest here. Now, the thing about India, which is the only other country with positive demographics is, they have such a poverty problem now, I saw this the other day, and I thought this was interesting. This is the psychology of a market cycle. Basically, this is the beginning of a bull market, the end of the bull market, and a bear market, and then the difficult period that follows as you have to regroup and new stocks take their leadership. For example, if you look at 2000 to two, 2020 to 2002 on our aggression index, you can see here what the graph says is that when the rally starts, okay, so when the rally starts, there's a lot of disbelief. Then once it gets going, then optimism starts to kick, kick in. People really start to believe and get a little thrilled. Then we get euphoria. Then the top comes in. We turn down. Now, bear markets, I've been through five bear markets since 1976. And i got to tell you, the 1970s and early 1980s was very, very difficult. But what happens is you're going to go through a bear market probably about once every 10 years, and you're going to have to learn how to survive the bear market. So in my opinion, the only way you survive a bear market is you have to make as much money as possible during the bull phase, then go to defensive strategies such as cash in the bearish phase. Now, once you get down to this level, so as you can see here with our aggression index, we had a major bull market, everything peaked, 
We got the sell signal in early, you know, late 21, early 22, went to a heavy cash position, stayed, stayed, stayed in cash, basically got a bottom here back in December of last year, and we're starting to work our way up. So if you look at this cycle, it's, it's, it's exactly what we're looking at here. This stage here is basically this stage here. Now, the interesting point they make here is the word depression, because I can tell you personally, as I go through something like this, I do get depressed. I was, I was very depressed. I, I love the stock market. I want to make money in it. And when I can't, I, I just flat get depressed about it. Well, these depression cycles tend to last between 11 and 14 months. So that's where the Coppic curve comes in. The Coppic curve is a weighted moving average of the S&P over 11 to 14 month rate of change. So what happens is, just like you can see here in the graph, we rolled over, here we go, bull market rolled over, now we're going back into a bull market. Basically, it's just simply saying you've got to use defensive strategies and then know when to start getting aggressive. We think we've started a new bull market, so we are getting somewhat aggressive. Now let's just look at the five indexes. Remember, we want to be above both moving averages, which is the 25 and the 50 day, and you want the lower moving average to be going up. NASDAQ, no doubt about it, that's on a buy signal. Here's the mid cap stocks on a buy signal. Here we have the New York Composite. This is a lot of banks in here. This, this thing's starting to really get ahead of steam going. That's a bull market. Um, as the small caps on a buy signal. So every index we look at, which is five, here's the S&P 500 on a buy signal. Every index we're looking at is in a positive way. Now, I did also want to men mention the fear index. This is the volatility, the VIX, the volatility index, whatever you want to call it. This thing's really getting down into low readings for the first time in a long time. So basically, the volatility index is positive. Here's our economic indicators. You can see interest rates have kind of settled down in here. That's the 10-year Treasury. Now, the price of oil is starting to break above the 200-day moving average. So, so we're getting some improvement in oil prices. Financial stocks showing a lot of strength. You got to have a strong financial system. That's that's really important. New lows on the New York Stock Exchange, well under control. We're not seeing crazy numbers here. You know, back here in the bear market, you can see the problem. Now, the other thing that's happening is we're starting to see some real optimism coming into the market here. This is that uh, survey done every week by AAII. And the bulls minus the bears have gone very positive. So we've gone through an extensive period of pessimism. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. So this is starting to show signs that, you know, people are starting to get greedy. Now on the bank stocks, just to mention them one more time, we, you can see here on the regional banks, we're seeing a nice uptrend here. On the uh, trend meter, we've actually gone into the green. So hopefully this means that our banking problem that popped up uh, you know, with the, the failure of uh, Silicon Valley Bank. Hopefully this is, is behind us now and we're ready to go. So we like the market. We, we're doing some buying. Uh, however, you know, continue to use stop losses and so forth. But if you have any questions, please let me know.